This story begins long, long ago in a land of golden sunlight, green fields, and the bluest of waters. Among the valleys and snow-capped mountains, there lived a young prince. He was lord of all the eye could see, and he ruled it with the same wisdom that his father had, and his father before him. He lacked nothing, yet in his heart he was alone. One day, while hunting in the forest, he came across a beautiful maiden. She was the loveliest girl he had ever seen. And in the gentle light of her eyes, he saw that he must make her his queen. There in the quiet shadows of the trees, he laid his heart at her feet. From that moment on, they were never apart, and their days passed in laughter and the hushed tones of lovers. One evening, when the moon covered the land in a silver glow, the queen stepped out to gather flowers. Suddenly, from deep within the long grass, a venomous snake <laughs> struck and killed her. The prince was heartbroken. For days he lay next to the queen's body, his face broken with tears. His sadness was like some dark blanket covering the land. As he had no sons or brothers to succeed him, all began to fear that he would take his own life. Then one day his door opened and he rose and ate. He then turned to his advisers and said that he wanted the queen's body placed in a coffin of lead and silver, and that the outer coffin be made of scented wood wrought with gold. And that it be then placed in a sarcophagus of alabaster inlaid with precious stones. While this was being done, he went to the forest again to be with his thoughts. The same forest where they had spent all their whispered moments together. When he returned, he gathered his counsellors and his people before him and told them of what he had in mind. He said that he would adopt an heir and train him to take his place after his death. But for the rest of his time, he would dedicate all his powers and wealth to the building of a monument worthy of his lost queen. Year followed year, and he devoted himself to building and adorning the building. The great foundation was hewn out of living rock. The sarcophagus was then placed beneath a pavilion of fine workmanship, and about it there were set pillars of stone. There were so many, many details to attend to, and as the time passed, the prince was no longer the graceful youth who had loved the girl queen. He was now a man, grave and intent, wholly set upon the building. He had acquired a great dexterity over the material he had to use and learnt of a hundred stones and effects he had never thought of in the beginning. As the monument took shape and appeared to be on the verge of completion, the people gathered to stare in awe at its austere beauty. 
Often the prince would stand and look at the vista, deeply moved but yet unsatisfied. It was still not right, not finished. The next day he came and said nothing. Then for two days he stayed away. When he returned, he brought with him his architect and master builders. All looked, standing together amidst the serene vastness of their achievement. But something marred the absolute harmony. It was the sarcophagus. It now seemed to challenge the eye and appeared ugly and out of place. For a long time the prince was silent. Then he turned and said, take that thing away.